All right, David Harry here, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you this fantastic little two terabyte SSD by Tupan, which allows you to record up to ProRes RAW HQ open gate at 60 FPS on an iPhone 17 Pro Max. And it also has a USB-C pass through on it, which will allow you to connect things such as receivers for microphones and stuff. So I'm also going to be using the DJI Mic Mini with this. Now, what I'm going to do first of all is to just quickly show you the setup within DaVinci Resolve, show you the codecs being used and stuff like that. And then what I will do is then show you the stuff that I've recorded to demonstrate it outdoors. Now, if you don't mind, if you could give the video a thumbs up and maybe a sub to the channel if you really like the video, and maybe give the video a hype as well. And then what I will do is after I've done all that stuff, I will come back and I will do some more close ups and show you another configuration that we can put the system into. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly go over some of the stuff here in DaVinci Resolve and this might give you a bit of a better idea as to what's going on. So to start off with then, as far as the master settings are concerned, I'm actually in a 4K UHD timeline. Now of course I'm shooting in open gate, but I want to use open gate with inside 16.9 so I'm rescaling it. Now on that point there, we actually do get a bit more resolution even after we've expanded to 16.9 or done a center pan scan or crop whatever you want to call it within a 4k UHD project so we're actually still downscaling slightly from like open gate when it's cropped into to get into 16.9 for 4k UHD which basically means that we're doing a slight bit of oversampling here which is actually a really good thing as far as resolution and quality are concerned now I will go into that in a little bit more detail in another video where I compare the native 16.9 recordings for 4k against like the open gate recordings recordings and show people exactly what those differences are when we kind of like start rescaling stuff also i'm in 60 fps here as we can see now as far as the let's see the color management I'm basically using a color managed setup here. So essentially what I'm doing is basically getting like resolve to do like any kind of auto transforming and stuff like that. I'm not really that good at color grade. And so I just kind of try and leave it down to resolve to kind of do it as best as possible, to be honest with the auto transforms. Okay, so that should do for that. Now, as far as the actual main clip is concerned here, which is the main ProRes RAW HQ clip, if we have a look here with inside the RAW settings, the only thing that I've done here is to alter the ISO setting on playback. So I, that's the only thing that I've touched actually. I didn't bother touching like white balance or anything else. So only the ISO setting. You can of course go in and like, you know, start changing a whole bunch of stuff like, you know, the exposure bias and the color temperature for your white balance. But as far as I'm concerned, I was happy with the way the picture looked after just touching up the ISO there. Now, if we actually go to the timeline, if we have a look at the main clip here, if I go into the inspector, as we can see, Apple ProRes RAW HQ60, and there is the actual native resolution, which is 4224 by 3024. But like I say, I've just basically done like a center pan scan, as it were, or you know, a zoomed in crop, which is still higher resolution than what it would have been if I'd have shot in 16.94K UHD as well. It's actually really awesome. Now, further down here, there's a second clip, and that is from my iPhone 16 Pro Max, and that's basically just a HD. 265 recording and that's just like again 60 fps and stuff there, there really isn't much to explain here because this particular clip is just to show you what's going on as i'm doing the actual example now although it is set to 16.9 and i've kind of blown in or done a center pan scan whatever you want to call it what i actually do though at the start i start off here where I've just basically centered the open gate within a 16.9 frame. And so what's going to happen as that plays through, at some point it'll just start filling up there until it actually reaches like, you know, the full height or sorry, the full width for 16.9. Anyway, I think that's basically everything that I need to explain as far as this is concerned. However, if anybody's got any interest in this type of stuff, let me know in the comments section and I'll try and do maybe some short videos just to show like, you know, quick kind of key 
processes that you would typically go through to get around things such as like aspect ratios and resolutions and such and how best to kind of like deal with particular types of codecs within the timeline and things of that nature anyway on to the example here of me outside doing my vlogging example but first a quick word about this video's sponsor who is Acasis. Acasis are the market leader when it comes to Thunderbolt peripherals for your Apple Silicon Mac. From Thunderbolt 4 and Thunderbolt 5 SSD enclosures through to Thunderbolt hubs and docking systems. With industry leading blazing fast speeds, Acasis has you covered. To find out more about the entire Acasis product lineup, check out the links in the video description below and don't forget to use my 15% promo code for a 15% discount off anything you buy from the Acasis website. Okay, so outdoors just to do this little 60 FPS example using the iPhone 17 Pro Max with the Blackmagic camera app in open gate with ProRes RAW HQ. Okay, so like I say, this is just a quick example to show the capabilities doing like 60 FPS. Now, of course, with this example, I'm also using the DJI Mic Mini, so there it is there and the receiver for this is just plugged into the USB-C pass-through on the two-pan SSD which makes it super convenient to keep the size down without having to add extra things such as like extra power uh, through something like a powering hub system and stuff like that or some kind of a docking system and as I've already mentioned in a previous video where I've done the 24 FPS example this kind of thing here is definitely the kind of thing that I would personally use although yes it is a little bit cumbersome with everything all hanging off the edge of the iPhone but you know whether or not the setup is like you know the way that you would physically set these things up whether whether or not that's what you're into the whole point of this video is just to prove uh, the proof of concept as it were so basically you know recording at 60 60 fps with the highest uh, bit rate and stuff like that which is HQ with ProRes RAW with the open gate and then also with this like USB-C pack through onto the receiver for the microphone because of course you could be wiring this up in a multitude of different other ways this is just the way for me uh, which is the most convenient and it's the way that I would normally shoot stuff anyway okay so what I'm going to do here is just do a little bit of a close-up with this camera or this phone now I don't know if I'm going to be getting focus here hold on there we go that should be in focus so that's what it looks like from the front there now what I'm going to do is just come around and do uh, some close-ups off the side here might have to refocus there we go okay so as you can see there's the two pound two terabyte ssd and then there is the receiver for the dji mic mini hanging off the side there and like i say you know and i've already said it a few times now in the previous video and in this video i do appreciate that that is not going to be for everybody because yes if you especially if you're handheld you know the chances of smacking into something kind of like go like a little bit higher you're raising the stakes for critical errors shall we say once you start going handheld with all kinds of stuff hanging off the side of the phone and what have you however like i say this video is more of proof of concept because of course there are different ways of wiring these types of things up anyway i think that should do it for this example for 60 fps with this type of a setup okay so just before i show you this other way that we can set up the s SSD with the receiver I'm just going to show you what comes in the package here for the SSD and just to quickly show you the two ways that you can connect it to the iPhone so we get this box here and everything all comes nicely packaged and it's all neat inside the box we've got this little carrying pouch here we've also got this little kind of manual and setup guide now we've got these two USB C little cables here with like these angles on them now I'll show you these in a second and then of course <laughs> there is the SSD and it is absolutely tiny okay so what I'll do now is to show you the two different ways that we can connect the SSD to the iPhone and the first way is to do what I was doing in the video which is just to connect it directly to the USB-C port on the iPhone 
now if you give us a few seconds this should pop up there we go so two pan now on this little screen here this tells us how many watts is being pulled the voltage being pulled and also how many amps is being pulled and it will also indicate to us the life of the ssd then over here it's just telling us that this is the two terabyte version as well now the second way that we can connect the ssd to the iphone is magnetically so let me just quickly show you this so we get the ssd and just pop it on there and as we can see it is compatible with the magsafe magnets with inside the iphone now the thing is here i've actually got a case on and it still works fine so that's really cool but it is actually designed to connect direct to the iphone but will work with the case now in order to be able to connect it then to the usb c port we've got these two angled cables here now the long one is for the pro max and then the short one here is i think this must be for the pro i've never used it however i will show you this short cable being used in a second for this alternative way of setting up with the receiver for the dji mic mini so with the ssd on the back there all we do we, we might have to fiddle around with it and get it positioned correctly but we just pop the end of the cable in there like that and then if we come down here we'll just pop the other end there into the USB C port and then the actual SSD just connects itself there to the iPhone as we can see and also as we can clearly see it is definitely working with the case on it as well. Now for this other way of connecting the DJI Mic Mini receiver we actually use this cable as well. Now of course this wasn't designed to do this but it just happens to do it really well. So what we do here the actual pass through USB C port there on the on the actual SSD we just get this cable we pop that into the USB-C port there like that. So as we can see, it's all connected up like that. And then all we do, we just get the receiver and then pop that into the other end of the cable there. Now, as we can see, it's a little bit springy and stuff, but it's not going to fall off or anything. But that might just be a better way for some people to use something like this because it means that you don't have to have it all hanging off the side here. Anyway, let me get on to an end summary. Okay, so so to an end summary and I think the only thing that I can say here is I absolutely love this little SSD it is just absolutely fantastic and it allows me to do like the perfect setup for my iPhones which is basically keep it as small as possible and don't forget this works with any of the iPhones that have got USB-C on if you're using apps which can actually like write externally to the SSDs you can of course also use it just to back files up from your you know your iPhone and stuff like that so it has actually got like a multitude of uses however I think the biggest thing for me as well as being able to have the external ssd is the ability to pass power through to it or from it to external microphones and stuff now in this instance i've obviously shown you it being used with the receiver from the dji mic mini however there is enough power being passed through that usb c port to power up a typical ecm microphone ECM being electret condenser mic so that's going to be typical for say lavaliers but also like little small like you know on camera microphones you know like your road video micros and stuff like that they will all be able to be powered from that USB-C port as well so once again if you want to use like you know a small mic you know mounted on top of your rig you can definitely power it all directly from the iPhone because in the past I've had to do like weird things where I've had to use like small Small docks or small hub systems with extra power with like an external battery to be able to power the SSDs and also the microphones and stuff now for me personally that's just a bit too much of a setup to be using going out on my own and trying to do like you know quick recordings with an external SSD and a microphone so like I say for me personally this is absolutely amazing now there is one other thing though um, two pan actually make an even smaller SSD which is this one here i'll try and do a quick close-up of this now this particular ssd is the tiniest thing i've ever seen this is 512 gigabytes right now you can't record prores and stuff with it but you can actually do things like h.264 and h.265 in 4k 60 and such so what i'll be doing soon is another video but showing you this one being used so if you don't need two terabytes and you're not going to be recording prores raw or even prores 
and you're just going to be doing something like H.265 and H.264, this is probably going to be the best thing for you. Although you would have to sort a different type of arrangement if you want like an external microphone. But if you're just going to use the internal mics and you just want like extra storage for doing your video files to, then this tiny one will do that perfectly. <clears throat> anyway, right, I think I'll just like carry on rabbiting on like a complete maniac if I carry on right now. Um, but yeah, there's no real downsides either as far as I'm concerned. So not to report as far as bad things are concerned all in all it has been absolutely perfect for my particular use and it will do exactly what you've seen in this video anyway there's going to be like links and whatnot to everything used in the video in the video description below and as i said from the outset of the video if you've liked it please do give it a thumbs up a sub to the channel will be absolutely awesome and i will also be doing more iphone 17 pro max videos and if you don't mind give us the, some of that hype stuff i'm still not entirely sure what that's all about but as, you know i'm hearing people talking about and, and asking for it so i think i need to join in so please hype the video for me anyways i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now